Hi everybody, my name is John Zmickley. I'm coming at you from the Media Innovation Lab here at Texas State University, and I'm coming at you in 360 video. Uh, just to show you um, just some examples of some of the equipment that we've got and some, um, some things to start thinking about before you get here. Um, and so maybe if you've already watched just for this little bit, you'll notice that you can look around the room and uh, you may have noticed that I drew an angry bird on the whiteboard right over here. Um, you may also see some of my talking notes in the back of the room there if your eyes are wandering around the room. Um, so feel free to look around and get, get used to the space. Uh, we're going to talk about all those uh, kinds of things when you're trying to tell a story in 360 video. Um, but before you look too far away, I want to show you some of the equipment that you'll be working with. Um, we have here a headset, and a lot of times when you're looking at these 3D um, experiences, you can put your smartphone inside one of these headsets and kind of look around. That's what I show you in the module this week, um, some examples of that. And then, of course, we've got the Google Cardboard, where you actually place your phone inside of here and can look around in 360 video, and that provides some level of immersion. Um, and then you've got the deeper levels of immersion with a more padded headset like this one. Uh, this is the Gear VR and the, um, the Gear uh, phone goes inside of here and provides a lot more of a cushioned experience. Um, and so those are some viewers that you can uh, use. And then we've also got uh, some cameras that I wanted to show you. Um, this is actually similar to the camera that you're going to be using when you come here. It's the Samsung Gear 360. Uh, pretty easy to use. You just have to press record and press stop recording. You'll see that there's two lenses here and you've got um, just a very simply you can press the record button and you can set this up on a tripod and you'll notice that there's a tripod actually in the back of the room there too if you want to take a look at one of the tripods we'll be using. But this is a really great little uh, 360 camera. This is another fun one. It's the Insta360 and it's uh, nano and it actually connects, you'll see the lightning port there, it connects to your iPhone. And again, it's got two lenses and what has to happen is both of those lenses have to uh, connect and they have to use some special software called stitching software that will connect those two lenses together and then you can edit them in a regular video editor like um, Adobe Premiere. Um, this is a nice big boy here. It is actually six different GoPros that are connected together on a rig. And so that's another way that we can use 360 cameras. Um, it's very high quality because obviously there's six different lenses on here and they're all uh, require high-end software to um, connect and to stitch together. So uh, that's a pretty uh, expensive but also time-consuming um, endeavor, but you come up with a really, really great product because um, that can deliver up to 8K uh, with this particular um, rig. Um, so I wanted to also show you, if you would kind of follow me in this direction, we've got some uh, other things set up here. This is an Alienware computer, and in this computer will um, run our HTC Vive that we have. Uh, the HTC Vive is a, an immersive tethered headset that you can build a 360 or virtual environment. And then when you put the headset on, these sensors will be set up around the room and they can uh, sense where you're moving and also these are controllers so you can interact with a lot of the equipment as well and hopefully when you come here you'll be able to interact with some of that stuff. Um, I also wanted to show you um, one of the cameras you'll be using. We, we just got these today, the Gear 360. I want to do a little bit of an unboxing with you. Um, and so when I open up the box here you'll see I can open it up and there is a nice little 360 camera that you guys will get used to using. Uh, it's very similar to the one that you just saw over there, but it is brand spanking new. You can see how shiny it is. Uh, comes with a charger, of course, and a little case. So uh, those just came in. We have about, let's see, a whole box of them back here. So um, also wanted to just talk a little bit about 360 storytelling and how it's different from traditional storytelling. Um, just from a few notes that I have here, you'll notice that there is no behind the camera when we're telling 360 stories. Uh, there's no hiding behind the camera and you have to make sure that everything in the room is exactly how you want it and situated correctly because uh, people are going to be looking around and that creates somewhat of a challenge. Um, also, I would say stationary spots are best when you are 
Um, hold, letting the camera sit still, it makes the user feel like they're just a, a, a passive viewer of the, of the um, space and they can explore where they want to. If you're moving a camera around and have a monopod and you're kind of marching around with it, it's shaky for one thing, and secondly, um, it, it, it lets the it loses um, some control from the user, and that's not very good. Um, secondly, eye level is best. You'll notice that my uh, camera here is at about eye level. That's usually where you want to where you want to seat them. Um, and then you'll see this light tripod that I have here. We use these to hold the cameras up, and they have those skinny lens at the bottom. You guys will use um, tripods that are very similar to these. And in the stitching process, it's easier for the uh, stitcher to remove the skinny legs rather than the long tripods when they kind of start from the top and, and bend out. It's not as easy to get rid of those lines. So that's why we use light tripods for the most part. And of course, the golden rule, which we'll talk about when you get here, is what stories lend themselves to VR? What stories lend themselves to a 360 video? Um, and so if it doesn't really, it won't, won't really add that much to the video, then why would you spend the time to stitch and make all these products um, for something that you could have done in a flat video a little bit better? So we'll talk about all that kind of stuff when you guys get here, and I just want you to start thinking about maybe what, what stories would lend themselves to 360, um, what spaces would lend themselves, and what immersive experiences might lend themselves to 360 storytelling. Um, and hopefully when you get here, we'll be able to do that. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in a few weeks.